I get a ton of questions about how to recruit a great board of directors, especially when you're first starting a nonprofit organization. But the fact is you can recruit and vet a uh, slew of board candidates the same way that you would a job with an application and interview process. So in this video, I'm gonna talk a little bit about how to set up a board application to recruit great candidates, the types of things you wanna make sure to ask and what to do afterward to get some of those great board candidates in to your organization. Welcome back. If this is your first time to my channel, my name is Amber Melanie Smith and I make these videos to help aspiring change makers with tips and strategies to help you change the world and live a life of impact and purpose. The videos often relate to starting a nonprofit, creating a social impact, and more. If you're not familiar with my story, I started a nonprofit many years ago and it is now my current full time job. So I have been able to see from the very beginning, starting from scratch, zero dollars in the bank. What do you do? How do you grow a nonprofit, recruit a board, raise money, etc.? So I talk a lot about a lot about those experiences here on this channel and provide tips and strategies, things that I've learned, things that I wish I'd done differently to help you out if you are on a similar social impact journey. So I hope this video helps you out. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up and tell YouTube that you like it and leave comments and engage with the video and also subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get alerts when my next video comes out. Okay, so let's get into the topic. So before I get into what you would want to include in a board recruitment application, I want to talk a little bit about some of the advantages of recruiting board members through an application process as opposed to some other means. The first is that creating a board application process and having candidates go through that process really helps you clarify what you are expecting from board members. And as I've talked about in a couple of other videos, this is really important because if someone joins a board, which is a big commitment, thinking that things are going to be one way and then those expectations are not met, it can lead to them resigning early, it can lead to conflict, it can lead to all sorts of things that you want to avoid so that you can focus on pushing your mission forward, which is why you're starting a nonprofit in the first place. So doing this recruitment process through an application will make it clear. You'll be able to articulate in writing what you're looking for and the candidates will also be able to articulate in writing who they are and what they're all about. The second thing is that it's a fair process. When you put an application out there and you are willing to accept candidates from around your community to share their skills, their time, their talent with you, it is a more fair process than just picking out your friends to be on the board and also having all those amazing skill sets on your board will definitely help you make progress towards your goals. An application process also helps you identify the strengths and skill sets of your candidates. And as I've talked about in some past videos, this is really, really important because you want to be recruiting the board members for that board term, whether it is a year, two years, three years, whatever it may be. You want to make sure that the skills that they bring to the table align with what your organization needs at that time in its development. For example, if you're just starting out, you wanna make sure you have some strong fundraisers on your board. So having people tell you about their skills in sales or raising money or marketing to help inspire people to give money, these are all gonna be important things that you want to know from your board candidates at that time in your stage of development. It also helps you identify the values and the motives of board candidates, you know, whether they're trying to join the board so that they can have something prestigious on their resumes or if they genuinely care about your cause. A lot of that can come out in an application process. And to that end, an application process will help you weed out those who are not going to be the best fit who are not ready to truly commit to the cause or give the time and energy that your cause needs. If you put those expectations up front, whether it's 
the length of the board term, how many hours per month they're going to be expected to contribute to your cause, uh, the skills they need to bring to the table, the dollars they need to help you raise, all of that stuff. It is going to scare away the people that you do not want on your board, and that is a good thing because the people who remain are going to be a better fit. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'm going to talk about what are some of the things that you actually include in the application itself. Now first, you want to make sure that your application, uh, the link to do it, the document that you're requiring people to fill out, whatever it is, it is somewhere that you can um, share online, perhaps on a website, something easy that you can put in an email so that people can find it and access it uh, effectively. Applications should be in written form. You can do a document, you could do, I, I've used Google Forms for board applications, whatever your tool of choice is, uh, make sure it's in writing because that's how you get all this valuable information about the candidate. The first thing you want to get from candidates is of course the basics, the contact information, who they are. Um, I've asked for LinkedIn profiles in board applications as well. Um, that is kind of like a way of sharing your resume. Um, they could also share their resume, kind of gives you some sense of their job experience, what talents, skills they might bring to the table that way. Um, and also can give you some really interesting insights, uh, talks about um, if, if it's a LinkedIn profile, you can see like who else they know that you might know or who they might have connections to that might be valuable supporters in the future as well. Along the lines of getting this basic information, you also want to ask where they're located. This is very simple, but you want to make sure that your board members are serving the community that or are living, sorry, are living in the community that you're serving. If it is a national organization, it would be a good idea to make sure that your board candidates represent the diversity of the locations that you are planning to serve. Board members can be more effective as board members if they're familiar with the needs of the communities that they're serving, if they're part of those communities. So that's why geography plays an important role here. Depending on your specific mission, you also might want to ask for the age of a board candidate, making sure that you have a diversity in life experiences and perspectives. Now, in some cases, if your mission is very specific or focuses on a target population of, let's say, mothers with kids ages three to five, that's extremely specific, but to, um, to my point, it, it, you wanna make sure your board reflects the community you serve. So if you are a board and you serve mothers with kids three to five and you have no mothers with kids ages three to five on your board, you have a problem because you are not going to get the perspectives of the very people that you're serving in your organization. And I always like to ask what sector of uh, work that they have the most experience in, like if they've been working in government, other nonprofits, or the corporate sector, um, that will help me understand, you know, what sorts of networks they might have and what types of skills they might be bringing to the table. Another thing that's important to ask uh, in a board application is if they have any past nonprofit board experience. And the reason for that is you may find that those with no nonprofit board experience or less nonprofit board experience might have some um, misconceptions about what it means to be on a nonprofit board. You are fiscally and legally responsible for the organization. In some cases, you can be held liable for things that happen in the organization. So you want to make sure that board candidates really understand what it means to be a part of a board of directors. And there's some great resources online about that. I'll be sure to drop a few links in my description. So check those out. Which isn't to say that you should not have people with no board experience on your board. It is simply that you, you're gonna need to put in place some additional training, some additional documentation to make sure that they understand what the expectations are. And it might also help to have some people on your board who have had nonprofit board experience so that they can be good guides and partners to those with less experience. Next, you wanna make sure you ask if the candidate has any uh, past experience with the issue or cause that your nonprofit is going to focus on or at the very least get a sense of what 
level of knowledge they have about that issue. It is very, very important that all board members understand the problem that your organization is trying to solve and can be effective spokespeople and fundraisers and advocates for that cause. Okay, now we're getting into the good stuff. On your board applications, you wanna make sure that you are asking extensively about their skills and experiences. Now, we talked about this a little earlier in the video. There are different ways to know what skill sets someone has, collecting resumes, LinkedIn profiles, etc. But one strategy my organization recently used that I thought was um, very helpful was we used a ranking system where the candidates would uh, read the name of a skill like um, accounting or whatever it was. And then they would rank themselves on what level of skill they had in it from no experience to beginner to intermediate to expert level. And what we found was that people were going to be generally honest about what their rankings were and the different skills. Um, of course, if you, if you uh, are not truthful about this and someone calls you on it, that sucks. So um, I think people have an incentive to be honest about what skills they have and where their strengths really lie. So I'm showing here a, you know, an example, a screenshot of part of my organization's board application where you can see some of these skills written out. And you can tweak your board application to fit, uh, like I said, the circumstances of your nonprofit at that time. Let's say the thing your board members need to focus most on for the next three years is marketing. Then you wanna ask perhaps about various marketing related skills more prominently. If you just want a um, very diverse set of skills, you might ask about a lot of different skills at one time. So for example, on our application, we talk about um, marketing, fundraising, accounting, technology, you know, we've got some coding involving uh, my organization, um, lots of different skill sets. So they rank where they believe they fall on the spectrum of skills, and we trust that they're being honest about that, and then we're able to see where not only a single candidate's strengths lie, but when you're putting together a team of multiple candidates, this is a great way of kind of analyzing where they can complement each other and fill each other's gaps. You can use the same strategy for ranking some of those soft skills like uh, communication, networking with others, leadership, etc. And finally, you always want to make sure that you have a section of your board application where the candidates can provide their own free-flowing answers that are text-based. So they're not answering multiple choice, they're not ranking themselves, they're just putting an answer in their own words because when they do that, you will learn a lot about them. The types of questions you want to put in your um, like open answer section are things that will help you understand how aligned the candidates are with your cause, the type of passion they might have for your cause, whether they align with your values, all these sorts of things. Will help you understand if they can make the time commitment and just get to know them as people. You know, board members are humans too, and they have other interests outside of your organization, and it's good to know those things. You can bond with them um, and have building great relationships through those things. So an example of an open-ended question you might ask is quite simply, why are you interested in being on our board of directors? Or why are you interested in this cause specifically? Or how do you believe that you uniquely can drive our mission forward? Okay, so those are some of the types of questions that I would recommend asking on a nonprofit board application. You also wanna make sure that you give candidates a deadline. So, you know, answer all these questions by this date and submit with your resume or whatever you want the deadline to be. But um, that will make sure that you have all the candidates who you're expecting in at a certain time and you can go on to the next stage, which is an interview process. An interview is, I think, an important part of the vetting process. You know, you get all their answers in writing and that gives you some insights about them, but nothing beats interacting with a person in person or through Zoom at the very least during the pandemic. There are lots of different ways to do an interview process. Uh, in my organization, we've been through multiple different ways and 
uh, we have some ways that we prefer to do it uh, over others. For example, we are currently, um, or in our, our most recent board recruitment cycle, we had um, more like a networking event as opposed to a one-on-one -on -one or one and a group of board members interviewing candidates at one time. We thought it'd be a little bit less intimidating. So in that style, you would have multiple candidates there at once. You'd have all your board members, if you already have a board, assuming um, there at once. And then everyone's mingling and getting to know each other and then reflecting on what they learned about each other at the very end. Whatever strategy you want to do, if you're just starting out and you might not have any other board members um, to help you be making these decisions on new board candidates, if it's just you, then interview them, vet them, make sure that you're talking through all of the expectations of what it means to be on the board, the board term, the commitment that they're going to be making monthly, if there's a fundraising commitment, all of these things, make sure that they know that up front uh, after they submit their application during the interview process. Once you've had a good conversation and you kind of get a sense of who they are, it's always a good idea to do a background check of board members. Um, I haven't had any board members who have failed a background check, but it's just a good idea um, just, just to be safe and um, make sure that you're covering all your bases. This is even more true if it's a board member who's going to be dealing with any of the finances of your organization and or working with vulnerable populations served by your organization. Finally, you've gone through all this screening and vetting, you've reviewed their applications, you've met with them, and you've got a handful of candidates that you just really love and you want to bring on board, what do you do next? So what we do in our organization is we send them an email saying, you know, congratulations, we would love to bring you on board. Please let us know by X date if you accept. That gives them one final chance to back out if they think that they're not going to be the best fit for your organization after going through that whole interview process and learning more about what you are planning to do as a nonprofit organization. The other thing you might want to consider is um, giving them what's called a board agreement. It is a list of things, you might put it in checklist format, that board members are expected to be doing as board members throughout the year. So I agree to the following. I will um, raise X dollars. I will attend at least 75% of board meetings. I will um, speak to 10 of my friends or, you know, whatever, whatever expectations you want to put, putting it in a board agreement, having them review that and then sign off on it. Keep in mind, this is not a legally binding document, but it's one of those final things you can put in place to make sure that it's super, super clear what the expectations are of being on your board. Okay, so that is the board application process in a nutshell. I hope that that has helped you out. Don't forget, once again, to like this video, share with your friends who are in the change maker and nonprofit space, and subscribe to my channel and ring the bell to get alerts when my next video is posted. Also, share in the comments where you are in your board recruitment process, or if you are on a board and you had a great uh, experience being interviewed or applying for a board, share that. You know, other nonprofit folks want to know what was it like for you. So definitely share in the comments. One final thing, if you are on Facebook, don't forget to check out my group, Change the World or Bust, where myself and other change makers are having conversations about uh, our nonprofit, our social impact journeys, um, everything having to do with the state of the world and what we can do to uh, make a dent in some of the problems that we're facing. So hope to see you next time. Thanks so much for stopping by.